kids, Mike and I are making cookies, but not just any kind of cookies. These are my mom's homemade Christmas cookies. She made them for us every year, and they are melt in your mouth. Delicious. Okay, so now I've already added the flour, sugar, and baking soda, and Mike here is gonna add just a dash of salt. Mike, I said a dash. It looks like a dash to me. <sighs> it's a good thing I already pre-made a batch. Here they are, right out of the oven, ready to decorate. Okay, so I was thinking it would be fun if we decorate them to look like us, or someone that we love, like a family member. Wait, what about friends? Are friends like family? Absolutely. Now let's get started. This sounds like fun. Can we do it too? Yeah, the more the merrier. I'm gonna make mine look like dad, and it'll look like me, because we're a lot alike. You and dad are alike. Mm, he's Mr. Organized. I'm more like Jen than you are. Yeah, well, I look like him. Being like someone is more than just looking like them. It's doing what they do and liking what they like. Hmm. Let me think. Ah, you're not fit for space. You'd mash into a little ball the moment you hit orbit. Sit up straight. Eat your vegetables. Sit up. Ah, radiation poisoning. My hair's falling out. I don't got long. Sit up straight. Eat your vegetables. Well, you do have good posture. True. And you do love a good salad. True. <laughs> so, I guess we're both like Dad. And the same is true of our Heavenly Father. We can live in a way that our lives look a whole lot like Him. Wait, we can look like our Heavenly Father? I don't get it. I mean, what does God even look like? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. How to look like God so that when others see us, they see Him. And we can start by looking at God's very first Christmas gift to us. Jesus! <laughs> it's like today's point. God gave his first Christmas gift to show us how to love and live. Exactly. So today, let's think of ways that we can show others what God looks like. Mike, if you're going to keep eating the ingredients, you're going to have to get out of the kitchen. That goes for the rest of you. Take your cookies. I'll finish up here. Oh, she's cranky when she cooks. I heard that. Do you ever stop eating? No. So I was thinking about how we can look more like our Heavenly Father. Any ideas? Well, we do have that transformation station over there. We could use it to transform into whatever we want. The transformation station! That's a great idea! But how are we supposed to transform to look like God? I mean, none of us have ever seen him, so we don't know what he looks like. Well, we may not know what he looks like, but we can go off of what we do know about him. I'll go first. Uh, oh. Uh, God went to college? No, silly. But I was just thinking about how God is all-knowing. He's not just smart. Well, he knows everything about everything. So I stepped into the transformation station and ta-da. Well, you're right. God is all-knowing. But that's not all he is. Let me go next. <laughs> God works in a circus? No! God is strong! Nothing is too hard for him! That's true, God is strong, but I think I can do better. God leaps tall buildings in a single bound? I'm sure he could do that and a lot more, but that's not my point. My point is he's all powerful. Away. <laughs> nice. Okay, my turn!
God looks like my grandma on a bad hair day? No! God has been around since before time began. So I figure that makes him pretty old, right? Right. Somehow, I think we might be missing the point. I just had a big idea. Well, what is it? Breathe, my friend. Well, Dr. Emo and Nitro. I don't get it. What do you mean? Nitro does not look anything like Dr. Emo. Hey, Nitro, are you like Dr. Emo? My creator, Dr. Emo, designed me according to his own attributes of knowledge, innovation, and problem solving. I act according to how he designed me. In that way, I am like my creator. Is that what you mean? That's exactly what I mean, Nitro! See? Nitro doesn't look like Dr. Emo. He is like Dr. Emo. Oh, Mike, that is so true. Perhaps we don't need to worry about looking like our Heavenly Father. We just need to be like him. But you know, we've missed the most important thing. Oh, yeah? Oh, well. Are you gonna tell us? God is love. <laughs> Duh. Wait, how are we supposed to look like love? <gasps> That's a good question. <laughs> Maybe this will help. The Bible tells us to love, but have you ever wondered how to do that? After all, how do we even know what love really is? The Bible talks a lot about love, and one of the people who loved best of all was John. That's because he was one of Jesus' very best friends. Jesus loved him very much, so if anyone knew about love, John did. John wrote a letter that we call the book of 1 John in the Bible. It says that love comes from God. Love is who God is, and only God can give us a new heart, a heart that knows Him and loves like He does. The person who refuses to love doesn't really know anything about God, because God is love. So when you know God, you know real love. And I'm not talking about the kissy kind of love you read about in books or see in movies either. This kind of love is different. This kind of love starts with God. Not that we once upon a time loved him, but that he loved us. God loves us so much, and this is how we know it. God sent his only son, Jesus, into the world so we could have a close friendship with God and know his love. God loved us first. He didn't wait for us to come to him. He came to us instead. If God loved us like that, Shouldn't we love others like that too? When we love one another, we show what God is like. As we love others, His love becomes stronger and healthier and bigger inside of us. That's perfect love. That's the kind of love the whole world can see. So we can love others because we can show them the kind of love God has for us. So you see, whoever loves God must also love others. Loving God includes loving people. You can't love one without the other. You've got to love both. That's because God is love, real love. And that's what it's all about. So when we show love, we show the world what God looks like? Now we're getting somewhere. So this cookie was supposed to look like nitro. Well, nice try. That's okay, I'll eat it. <laughs> oh, really, none of these cookies look like who they're supposed to look like. Makes me wonder how much I look like God. I mean, the Bible says that we're created in His image, so... I must look like him somehow, right? Loving like him is a great place to start. And hey, it is Christmas. And that's when God showed his love by sending us the very first Christmas gift, Jesus. That's right. And Jesus was the first Christmas gift. 
And the Bible tells us a lot about him. Right. So when it comes to looking like God, maybe looking to Jesus can help. Huh. Let's find out. This is the story of Jesus. If you've ever heard it before, then you might think the story of Jesus begins long ago on a star-filled night in the little village of Bethlehem. When Mary, his mother, gave birth to him in a stable. And that is a part of the story. But that wasn't really the beginning at all. You see, that was no ordinary night. And Jesus was no ordinary baby. To find the true beginning of the story of Jesus, we have to go back. All the way back to the beginning of history. To the very beginning of everything. When we do, we find out that Jesus was there and that he was very busy. Because long before he came into the world as a little baby, he was with God the Father in the very beginning. And he was about to accomplish some of his very best work creating absolutely everything. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. Jesus was the Word. Everything that was created received its life from Jesus, the Word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Then God spoke and said, Let there be light. And those words brought life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will never stop it. Jesus, who is the one true light, who gives light to everyone, came into the world. The Word, that's Jesus, became human and made his home among us. He came into the very world he created. He came so we would see God. He grew into a boy who grew into a man who died on a cross for our sins. He showed us what love looks like. He showed us what God looks like. And when we love him back, we become children of God. So we can live like Him and love like Him. And we can show the whole world what God looks like too. And that is the story of Jesus. Maybe that's what Christmas is all about. After all, God did send Jesus so that we could know what God is like. So when we live in a way that looks like Jesus, we actually look like our Heavenly Father, too. Hmm. Huh. I think I get it. But, do you know what will help me get it even more? Another cookie! Long ago, in a town called Nazareth, there lived a girl named Mary. Hello. Mary was very happy when she was finally old enough to get married and begin a family of her own. She became engaged to a man named Joseph. One day, an angel appeared. He said God was very happy with Mary and had chosen her to have a very special baby. The baby would be God's son. At first, Mary didn't understand how this could possibly happen since she was not even married yet. The angel reminded Mary that all things are possible with God. Mary knew that this was true, that all things are really possible with God. So she believed the angel and prayed that God would use her for his great plan. All of this was very strange huh? to Joseph. He still wanted Mary to be his wife, but he didn't know what to think about all that had happened. He was worried. Oh, no. He thought maybe they shouldn't get married after all. That made Joseph very sad. Suddenly, an angel appeared to Joseph. The angel said that Joseph should not worry. Instead, he should take Mary to be his wife, just like he'd always wanted. Mary's very special baby would be the son of God. He told Joseph to name the baby Jesus, which means God saves, because he would save people from their sins. So Mary and Joseph were married. Mary was almost ready to have the baby when an order arrived from the highest ruler in the land. They had to go on a long journey to Bethlehem to pay a special tax. Bethlehem is where Joseph's great, 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 great grandfather, King David, had come from. Ah. 
So Mary and Joseph set out for Bethlehem. Mary rode on a donkey day after day over the hills of Galilee, and Joseph took care of her. Finally, Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem. The streets were crowded with people who had come to pay their taxes, too. Mary was very tired from the journey. Joseph decided to find a room for them at an inn. He tried and tried, but at no. each inn the story was the same. There was no room for them anywhere. No. Still, Joseph wouldn't give up. He knocked on one last door. It was opened by a man who had a very kind face. He said there was a cave nearby. He used it as a t stable for his animals. Mary and Joseph could stay there. Mary and Joseph were relieved. At last, they had a place where Mary could rest, away from the crowded streets of Bethlehem. Mary gave birth to a baby boy, right there in that stable. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger full of hay. They named the baby Jesus, just like the angel had said. That very same night, on a hillside overlooking Bethlehem, some shepherds were watching over their sheep when a bright light appeared in the sky. They were very afraid. It was an angel, sent to them by God. The angel told the shepherds not to be afraid because he brought good news for all the people. The Savior, the Son of God, had been born. The shepherds could find him in a manger in Bethlehem. Suddenly the sky was full of light. There were angels everywhere praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace to all the people on earth. God loves you very much. The shepherds were amazed. Nothing like this had ever happened to them before. They rushed to Bethlehem so they could see the baby Jesus. When the shepherds arrived, they found Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus at the stable, just like the angel had said. They knelt down and worshipped him. Afterwards, the shepherds returned to the fields, rejoicing and telling everyone they ran into all of the amazing things that they had seen and heard that night. When Jesus was still a very tiny baby, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple in Jerusalem so they could dedicate Jesus to God. When they arrived at the temple, they saw an old man named Simeon. He was very excited. God had promised Simeon a special gift. God told Simeon he could live to see God's son, Jesus, before he died. Simeon was so happy. He asked Mary if he could hold Jesus. As he took Jesus in his arms, he thanked God for keeping his promise. Simeon told Mary that God said this baby would be the savior for all people. After Simeon left, a woman walked up to them. Her name was Anna. Anna loved to spend time at the temple. When Anna saw Jesus, she began to tell everyone that he was God's son and he was the only way for us to go to heaven and be with God. Mary and Joseph held Jesus close and rejoiced. They were part of God's great plan. Meanwhile, far away in the east, wise men were gazing at the stars. Suddenly, they noticed a new star shining high in the night sky. These men knew this was a very special star. It meant that a great ruler had been born. The wise men loaded up their camels and set off to find the baby. They followed the star and it led them to where Jesus was. When they saw Jesus, they knelt down and worshiped him. They gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This was the very first Christmas when God gave us Jesus. All of this was just the beginning of God's great plan to save us so we could be a part of his family. When we trust Jesus with our hearts and make him the leader of our lives, he is with us. He brings us peace and he makes a home for us to be with him in heaven forever. What a gift. What a God. What, what a, a savior. savior. Christmas story I see it in a whole new way. I know what you mean. God is love and he showed us that love when he sent us Jesus. And Jesus showed us what God is like and if we live like Jesus we can look like our Heavenly Father. <laughs> and then we can show the whole world what God is like. <laughs> okay last batch straight from the oven. I decorated these myself. Oh. Alyssa who's yours? Mine says true. It's right. God is always true to his promises. He makes them, and he never breaks them. Clint, here's yours. Oh, mine says love, because God's love never ends. It just goes on and, and on, on and on. And on. on. <laughs> okay, mine says father, because no matter what our dad is like, God is our heavenly father, and he's the best father of all. Emily, here's yours. <gasps> mine says Jesus, because when I look at Jesus, I see what my heavenly father is like. 
Mike? And mine says family. Because thanks to Jesus, I finally have one. <laughs> God is my heavenly father and I'm a part of his family and I have a family with, here with you guys. Aww, I love that. You know, we kind of look like a family when you think about it. Um, I don't see that. Oh, think about it. Jesus is God's son and he looks just like his dad. So when we love like Jesus, we look like our Heavenly Father too, which makes us look like a family. That's just like what the Bible talks about in Ephesians 5 too. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Now you all repeat after me. Will you join us? Ephesians 5 2. Ephesians 5 2. Live a life filled with love. Live a life filled with love. Following the example of Christ. Following the example of Christ. Hey, that's just like today's point. Repeat after me. God gave his. God gave his. First Christmas gift. First Christmas gift. To show us. To show us. How to love and live. How to love and live. <laughs> awesome. I'm hungry. Let's eat. Mike. Because I'm hungry. How are you still hungry? Hasn't he had like 12 cookies? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.